everyone, and welcome to another episode of One Mike Night, the podcast that brings you stories of artists and people on their journey, helping to guide, answer questions, and motivate you in life and the business. My name is Marco Suiz, and today we are doing a One Mike Night talk. You already know I'm here with my co-host. He is a licensed clinical psychotherapist and author of the book, The Mental Health Pandemic. Please welcome back Shane Mark Tull. It's good to see Hello. you, sir. How are you? It's good to be <laughs> I'm doing well. We yeah, it, you know, I'm a little bit under the weather, but you know what? The show must go on. So we will push through. Let's That's right. That. Awesome. So, we, you know, we're always talking about mental health, you know, here. And uh, the topic today I want to talk about is we're at that time of the year where we're going back to school and kids and parents are feeling a little bit of anxiety and, and a lot of feelings going on through that. So I want to maybe dissect it just a little bit and be kind of thorough in terms of, of what we say about uh, mental health. Um, the importance of mental health in kids and the importance of mental health with parents. So first, I want to kind of start off by saying, what is anxiety? What would you say the definition of anxiety is? I mean, just having a, a rapid reaction or a feeling of being overwhelmed as it relates to a certain situation. So when you look back at the past school year of the shootings at schools and the banning of books and all the hysteria around that, it is understandable why both parents and children will have some anxiety returning to school because you, you just don't know what's, what's going to happen. And I think it's important that parents and children have these conversations about what are the expectations when they go back to school. I think teachers and parents need to have a stronger dialogue in terms of how do we arrest that, that anxiety that kids are experiencing as they return to school. Absolutely. And I, and I agree with that. And I think that also it's, you know, it manifests in a physical sense too, because the anxiety and the worry with the, with the um, fear and being unfocused, it also tends to manifest in the body, in the body mm -hmm. language, in your muscles, um, in your, in your, maybe even in your, your gut, your abdomen, the way you mm -hmm. feel about, you know, certain things and, and going back to school. As you mentioned, you know, we we don't know, you know, the the gun, the gun violence, mm -hmm. uh, the fear of COVID, mm -hmm. um, the kids who who were out of school for so long and now just getting acclimated and going back to class. Correct. That's that's a big fear and anxiety. And and it's a major adjustment in terms of are are they I think not being in school, they've probably missed a developmental milestone in terms of socialization and being put back into a space where it's crowded. Think of what happens when um, the class periods are changing, the hallways crowded, kids are screaming, hollering, running up and down. And that can be very anxiety provoking for, for kids that have been, that have not been in school for, right. two, for two years. Yeah. And, and even I think crowd into a classroom and having to sit there and yeah. Absolutely. That, that requires a lot. Yes. You're right. And I think, you know, we've mentioned this before too, like some of the violence that actually goes on in the school, you know, kids being bullied in the hallways, kids mm -hmm. being bullied in class and kids not, you know, uh, listening to the authority, you know, right. just the whole attitude of kids. So that in effect with the other kids that are in the, in the classroom who want to learn, who want to participate, there's some anxiety about that. You know, is there a fight <laughs> going to break out? It's the, yeah, it's disruptive, and are kids going to listen to their teachers? Right. Or, or do, 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 are, do teachers have the, um, the impetus yeah. to deal with kids that are, that are disruptive? I think it's important, I think, that teachers need a lot of support. They, I really think they are the unsung heroes of the pandemic, and returning to school with all these kids and trying to teach and and have some semblance of order could be anxiety provoking for them even before they get there. Absolutely, I agree. How do we, you know, as parents, as adults, how do we aid the children? How do we help them, you know, pacify those fears and anxiety? That's a big thing. That's a big job for parents. I mean, it's their job, but how do you do it? You just have conversations with them about 
what are your expectations of, of returning to school? What are some of your concerns? What are your fears? And, you know, kids are very good at talking once you ask them. Once you ask them questions, they will they will emote and they will let you know how they're feeling and what they can do. And, you know, what they, they can have support groups in the school or after school that kids can go to and talk about talk about your anxiety and support groups for parents that how how do we manage our children and how do we manage our own fears because our kids are at school and we're at work and and we're trying to focus on work but at the back of your mind you're worried every time your phone buzz is there something going on at school with my child right yeah, some of the, you know, I would say some of the couple of me excuse me, mechanisms would be, you know, just making sure your child gets enough sleep, yes. you know, even at night, just making sure your child is well rested. So the focus can be there the next day. You know, a lot of times the kids, you tell them to go to bed, they're in there on the phone, you know, mm -hmm. you're on the phone talking to someone or texting someone late at night, you get up, you've only had an hour of sleep. You're not focused. All right. You're not and, focused. And kids, kids need a routine. They need a routine, and it's important that they have a routine because it, it helps them to be committed to something and they can follow through with mm -hmm. that. It's important that they do that. And only parents can set those routines and stick to them. If the kid is supposed to be in bed at 8 o'clock, make sure that kid is in bed at 8 without the phone, period. And I think you also have to make a space you know, as an adult, as a parent, where the child feels safe talking to you. Correct. You know, you have to, the child has to be able to come to you and say, hey, listen, I'm feeling this about about school. I'm feeling this about going to class or, you know, not being able to achieve or not, something's not right. And if it's not your parent, there has to be someone available in the school that they could talk to or some other trusted adult. Correct. But we have to create those spaces by opening up the conversations with kids, letting them know, listen, if someone is bothering you, harassing you, bullying you, whatever, I need you to know that you can come and talk to me about it. And my job is to help you get through it and find the necessary resources that you may need to navigate the process. Because if a parent, the parent may have to go to the school, talk to the teacher, social worker, guidance counselor, whomever, but they may have to galvanize a team to address this, to address the crisis. Do you think it would be a good idea to implement that for, say, the entire school or the entire class, or making you know making that part of a curriculum, a I mental health check in? Be. I think it should be. I really at least once or twice a week, mm -hmm. where or they should have at least a drop in center with a counselor or social worker there on premises that any student can just drop in, even if they just want to just sit there and for the the lunch period and just relax or they want to have or they want to talk. But it should be a safe place where students can go and drop in and just and just be. Because I think we need to create these safe spaces. Sure. I also think that you know it's good to be outside. The kids need to be outside. You need fresh air. You need time for your mind to be free and peaceful or and or be quiet. There should be quiet time. You know, whether yep. you take that at home where there's no music, there's no phone, there's no electronic devices and just a little bit of quiet so you can focus. Now, that that'll be punishment <laughs> for most, for most, adults, <laughs> for most of the kids, right? We live in this orbit where everything is just overwhelming and you're oversaturated with everything. So I think introducing quiet time might be really good for the spirit as well, just to give yourself five minutes to breathe and just settle, center yourself. And if we teach kids those, those um, mechanisms in terms of way they can center and take care of themselves, they will be healthy adults because they'll be able to self-regulate their, their behavior as well as be centered and be calmer. Do you think that's what uh, where we should go from here forward? Because I know a lot of us didn't have that growing up. You know, we as adults didn't have that. 
I mean, you know, I remember as a kindergartner, as a, you know, preschool, we had nap time and things like mm-hmm. that to quiet the kids down because we needed rest. And then afterwards, there was, you know, there was a whole change in energy. The yes. kids were, you know, focused. They could do work. They could interact. Yeah. 15 minutes to, uh, to a half hour of rest can be extremely vital to how your body functions, mo- function moving forward. So it's important that we place emphasis on rest. We live in a society where, you know, people think, oh, I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead. But right. if you don't get enough sleep, you'll die much faster. So it's important for us to be aware that rest and relaxation is important, very important. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to have a quick talk today about that. Did you have anything else you wanted to bring up for us in the conversation? That, that, that's about it for me. <laughs> Wishing the kids when they get back to school, you know, a productive year and to encourage them to value the, this opportunity that education affords them because education is the pathway out of poverty. Absolutely, one hundred percent. It's important that we stress that, that, and we need it. We need upliftment, but just sending them positive energy and being grateful for the teachers and the support staff that are there every day, day in day out, that may not be recognized for all the great things they do. So it really takes a village. So we all need to step up and support young folks as they go back to school and, and really encourage them that whatever last year was, it was this year, it's a new beginning and you can reinvent yourself and you can do better. And all of these things are so possible. And also bet on learning new ways. If the old way didn't work for you, try something new. There are new ways to learn, there are new ways for education and the world is moving in a different direction. So it may not be the book sense that you have in school. It may be something else, but learn a different way. Continue learning. Continue learning. Stay open-minded. Open-minded. That's right. Well, Shane Mark Toll, please tell everybody how we can get in touch with you. Oh, Shane Mark Toll, social media, Facebook and Instagram, and Toll Clinical Psychotherapy on Facebook. So I'm around. Thank you for joining us. Also, make sure you follow Shane Mark Toll. He has a conference coming up overseas. Yeah. Look for that. He will hopefully he'll post that on my page as well. So yeah, in his page. Will. So <laughs> please stay in touch. Author of the Mental Health Pandemic, new book coming soon, Mental yes. Health Pandemic Two. By Shane Mark Toll. I'm Marco Suis. M A R C O S L U I S. Follow the show at One Mike Night, and you can DM me on my Instagram or however you like. All the links will be down below and make sure you visit the store to get the merchandise. Have a great week and we'll see you next Tuesday. Oh, Marcus, you owe, yes. you owe me a cup, okay? So I I'm, do owe you a cup. I'm, the uh, cup, I'm waiting. I'm waiting <laughs> the One Mike Night mug is coming, yeah. believe me. Cool. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you guys friend. for all joining Good us. Luck. We'll see you next time. One Have Mike Night week. Talk. Bye-bye. Bye.